Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on section 4.5 on concentrations of solutions. Now we've talked about solutions being homogeneous mixtures that involve a solute being dissolved in a solvent. Now these solutions can have various concentrations. And the concentration depends on the amount of solute dissolved in a given quantity of solvent or in a given solution. The greater the amount of your solute dissolved in a certain amount of so solvent, the more concentrated the solution will be, the, the more concentrated the resulting solution. Now, solution, or sorry, concentrations of solutions are expressed in units of molarity. Molarity, represented by the letter capital M, expresses the concentration of a solute of a solution in terms of the number of moles of solute in a liter of solution. Meaning. Molarity is equal to the moles of solute you have per or divided by the volume of solution in liters. This is oftentimes written as moles over liters. This is understood to be moles of your solute divided by liters of your total solution, which is <clears throat> represented by big M here. So when you see big M, it's referring to moles of your solute per liter of your solution. For example, a 1.00 molar solution, written as 1.00 big M, and said as 1.00 molar, contains 1.00 moles of solute for every liter of solution. And we can calculate molarity, and let's talk about how to do so. Because different solutions will have different concentrations. If I'm making salt water as my solution, I can put a little salt, or I can put a lot of salt and I will make different concentrated solutions. So, calculating molarity. We'll do an example. A question says, calculate the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 23.4 grams of sodium sulfate, with that chemical formula, in enough water to form 125 milliliters of solution. First thing we do is make a plan. First, calculate the number of moles of sodium sulfate. Two. Cal con sorry, convert your total volume of solution to liters. And three, calculate the molarity using the equation that we saw on the last board. So first, calculate the number of moles of your sodium sulfate. We're given, or we're dissolving 23.4 grams of sodium sulfate. So we're going to find number of moles that 23.4 grams is equated to. So we use the molar mass. So for every one mole of sodium sulfate, I'll have 142.05 grams of sodium sulfate. My grams, sodium sulfate will cancel, and I'm left with moles with 0 0.165 moles of Na2SO4. Yeah. Now, step two, convert your total volume of solution to liters. In my last equation, I said it's moles of solute divided by your volume in liters of your solution. So your volume for molarity is moles per liter. So your volume has to be out of milliliters and into liters. So 125 milliliters, we just do a simple conversion into liters. For every one liter, there are 1,000 milliliters, giving you 0 0.125 liters of your solution. My equation for molarity is the number of moles of my solute, which is being dissolved in <clears throat> or divided by my volume of solution, which is here. So we just kind of plug and chug at this point, 0 0.165 moles of Na2SO4 divided by my volume, 0.125 liters. When I do so, I get 1.32 moles of Na2SO4 per liter. Or this can be written as 
1.32 big M, 1.32 molar Na2SO4. This is how we would calculate a molarity given a certain amount of our solute and the desired volume of our solution that we'd like. Just as we can calculate molarity and create different solutions with different concentrations, we can also dilute concentrated solutions. So dilution is really important because solutions in the laboratory are often purchased in very high concentrated form. We call those stock solutions. I wouldn't use those in the laboratory because it's just too concentrated to use. It could be very dangerous to use a very concentrated acid, um, for example. So solutions of lower concentrations can then be obtained by adding water. This is a process called dilution. Everyone here has diluted something before. If you have you know, iced tea or something and it's too sweet, you might put more water into it after you drank some, um, and it dilutes it. You, you taste less of the solute, which is that iced tea mix or the sugar that's inside of it. Now, let's look at a sample problem here. For example, say I want to prepare 250 milliliter solution of 0 0.100 molar copper sulfate. Meaning this is what I want to prepare. This is what I desire to use. So if you want a diluted tea, this is what you'd want. But what you're starting with is 1.00 molar copper sulfate. So you're going to dilute this concentrated copper 2 sulfate here to get this less, lesser concentrated copper 2 sulfate, 0.100 molar. How we do this is first guided by this thinking. Your moles before dilution are equal to your moles after dilution, meaning my moles of solute in the diluting process don't change because dilution happens because you're just adding water. If I have two moles of you know, salt in my salt solution, then I add some more water, I still have only two moles of salt there because I didn't add or take out any salt. So your moles of dilution before and after the reaction or, or after the dilution, excuse me, are the same. Now we know that molarity is equal to moles divided by the volume, meaning your concentration of a solution is equal to your moles of solute divided by the volume of your solution. Now if I rearrange this algebraically for moles, moles are equal to your concentration times your volume of solution. With that same thought, taking this, I can insert moles here. So moles before dilution is equal to concentration times volume. So concentration times volume before equals concentration times volume after, because concentration times volume equals moles. So just took that and made it into an equation. M times V before equals M times V after. And this is what I want. So this is, you know, after I've diluted, this is what I would like to get. I can also write it as M1V1 equals M2V2, just so I don't have to put before and after every single time. Now, one question to ask yourself when you approach this problem, and hopefully you can see it on your screens, is how much of your original solution will you need in order to create your diluted solution? That's what you're trying to find in this problem. So your original solution here is M1V1. So my original concentration of my original solution is 1 molar, 1.00 molar. Now, what I want to try to find out for this particular calculation is V1. How much of my original solution am I going to need in order to create this new wanted solution on this side? So we set this equal to what we want. We want a solution that is, has a concentration of 0.100 molar and a desired volume of 250.0 milliliters. Now when I do dilution problems, it doesn't matter if my volume is in milliliters or liters. Either one is acceptable. And I do this mathematically, multiply these two times each other, Divide by 1 each side, V1 equals 25.0 milliliters. What this means is this. Look at my drawing here. I start with my original stock solution of 1.0 
molar copper two sulfate. I'm going to need to take out 25 milliliters of it, my stock solution, and put it in a separate container. 25 milliliters in a separate container. And then I'm going to add water to a volume of 250 milliliters. So I'm going to add water to this now. So add H2O into here until I reach a volume of 250 milliliters. At that point, I've taken this small amount of 25 milliliters, which has a concentration still of 1.0 molar, and I've added water to it in order to dilute it to a point where it now has a concentration of 0 0.100 molar. That is my concentrated solution. I never put water into my stock solution. So never add water to stock solution because you might want to use it again. You don't, you're not going to be able to use it again if you dilute it every single time um, you need a diluted solution. So gentlemen, please take notes on this and come with questions next class. Adios.